Wow, what a response, eh? <clears throat> so, I was gonna wait to do this video until maybe tomorrow or the day after, wait and see what some of the, what the comments were that are gonna be rolling in, because I knew they were coming in. You knew they were gonna come in. But they came in a little bit faster than I think even I expected. Um, so, let's talk about why I chose the 3770K Ivy Bridge over Haswell. Even when I was at Fry's and I was at Micro Center, and both of them had Ivy Bridge, uh, I take that back, both of them had Haswell uh, motherboards, Z87 motherboards, as well as processors in the store. Motherboards were already available as of Thursday when I was at Fry's, and the processors were available if you knew somebody. And let's just say I know somebody at Micro Center. I had the opportunity to pick one up on uh, Thursday, as well as yesterday. Now, yesterday, I knew good and well Haswell was coming out today. I knew weeks ago it was coming out today. We also knew weeks ago exactly what we were getting with Haswell. I've seen a lot of people throwing around, well, you could have gotten more for 20 bucks, or you know, you could have just spent the same amount and got Haswell. Here's the bottom line. First of all, I live, I live local to a micro center, so I got the 3770K brand new for $229.99. Okay, it's $110 cheaper than Fry's, and I think it's maybe even a little bit cheaper than Newegg was. Now, when I was at Fry's, I got them to give me what the pricing was going to be for the Haswell. Their price was $339.99. I saw an ad today that Micro Center had the Haswell, because I was immediately emailed when it was, when it was free, um, or when it was available, uh, as well as when I was there yesterday, that the cost on it was... $279.99 for the 4770K. Now it's $50 more than I paid for the 3770. Yeah, we're talking only 50 bucks, right? The motherboards, however, to get a motherboard that had the same overclocking capability and the same uh, quality that this motherboard is, and, and you guys, if you follow me on Twitter, you know the last few days I've just been going nuts trying to figure out what motherboard I wanted to use because, let's face it, the motherboard, the motherboard is, is is a quality motherboard is needed for overclocking. It drives everything. Something goes bad on the motherboard, everything fails, clearly. I don't want to deal with RMAs and such, especially on a platform that is discontinued. The, the nearest quality motherboard to this one, or I should say same quality motherboard, was one of the Asus or the MSI Empower at nearly $300. This motherboard had a price tag of $289.99 on it. However, I got them to lower the price of this down to 222 because that's what Newegg had it for on clearance, as well as 40 bucks off. Even though I didn't pay or buy the, micro, the, the, um, the CPU from Micro Center, uh, because I returned it and then came and picked up this one after the fact, I got 40 bucks off of my price matched of 222 bringing it down to $182 for this motherboard. Now you add 50 bucks to the processor, and you add the $100 more that the motherboard's gonna cost, we're talking $150 additional what I paid for this. Now, what do I get for that 150 bucks? Linus, um, Newegg, there were some Chinese sources have all been putting out, oh, as well as overclock.net forums, uh, hard forum, um, Kyle, as well as, um, I don't remember his name, anyway, the, the editors over at Hard OCP, all those guys have been putting out Haswell benchmarks. They all show a standard 5 to 10% improvement over Ivy Bridge and when it comes to raw processing power. However, they show a 25 to 40% improvement in internal GPU. I clearly don't use an internal GPU. Haswell's improvements were entirely based on the, I think it's either the 4500 or 4600, I don't remember the, the actual number of the internal G GPU. They're trying to catch up to the AMD A10 series when it comes to the internal GPU. So there's very few advancements when it comes to the architecture of Haswell because Haswell is the talk, T-O-C-K, talk version of the TikTok cycle that, AMD, that Intel uses. I have a feeling based on the comments that I'm seeing from people in this video that a lot of you don't understand the release cycle of Intel and how they always go tick, tock, tick, tock. And what that means is tick is an architecture improvement, talk, is a, is a clock improvement. Haswell is the talk version of what Ivy was to tick. 
because Ivy changed the way some of the uh, memory controllers worked. Z77 and the, uh, things changed internally with Ivy Bridge because it dropped down to the 22 nanometer process where Sandy Bridge was a 32. Haswell is a 22 nanometer, just like the Ivy Bridge. However, all the improvements went into the GPU with some slight clock improvement when it comes to the actual clock speeds of the cores. It's $150, I wasn't gaining anything over this. Five to 10% for 150 bucks is not worth it. Now I hear people saying, okay, fine. So what did you gain over AMD? Did you gain five, 10%? Did you gain 20%? Did you gain nothing? I saw people say that, uh, well, AMD performs exactly the same as Intel. Here's the bottom line. Don't you think that's the very first thing that I tested? The very first thing I did was run all my benchmarks on my AMD stuff prior to removing it, logging it, and then comparing it to the Intel. Here's the hard facts on that, that I exhibited and I experienced when it came to going from the 8350 to the 3770. They were exactly the same when my AMD was overclocked to 4.8 and this was on stock clock of 3.5 with turbo turned on. The moment I bumped this up to 4.7, and by the way, I have a magic overclocking chip. Every now and then you get one. I've got one hanging on the wall right there. It's my old E6300, 1.86 gigahertz that was run at 3.42 gigahertz its entire life, never died. I got another one of those right here. This thing went to 4.7 when I set internal, uh, or when I set the V-Core voltage to the factory setting on static and left it, 4.7 on stock voltage, which is getting me insane low temps and ex insane efficiency. This thing blew my AMD out of the water when it came to rendering. That video that I put up that you guys are hating on rendered in just over three minutes. Three minutes. My AMD tends to render at about real time plus 10%. So if it was a 10 minute video, it would take about 11 minutes to render. If it was a five minute video, it was about five and a half. This thing rendered at about 145% real time with all of those transitions, as well as resampling on. The reason I moved to Intel, first of all, was because I, for, with the exception of the 8350, never adopt first generation of a new uh, of, of, of a new generation or the first run of it. The 8350, because it was so cheap, I just went ahead and bit the bullet, spent the 180 bucks or whatever it was, and went with the AMD 8350 to see how it was. Technically, it wasn't first generation because the FX bulldozer was already the same architecture. So San Ivy Bridge to Haswell was kind of the same of 8150 to 8350. So technically, I didn't buy the first generation. I never buy the first runs of anything when it comes to new technology. That's just the way that I work. I'm also holding my breath slightly for, for IVE. I wanna see what they're gonna do on the extreme. Remember, we only have Sandy E right now. All the extreme processors are Sandy Bridge, 32 nanometer and uh, actually it may be larger than that. I believe it's a larger die. I'm holding out to see exactly what the consumer level six core processors are gonna bring because I would ideally like to go quad channel RAM because rendering quad channel is gonna make a huge difference. So I saved 150 bucks which I'm gonna spend on my channel and I'm gonna pick up an Avermedia Gamer uh, HD so that I can have smoother rendering and smoother uh, capture for my live streaming. So I made a choice to stand back one generation, take the money and put it somewhere else into the computer to bring you guys a better experience when it comes to the streaming that you guys are constantly asking for. And because of that, I see people saying, oh, we've lost the one YouTuber that was sticking with AMD. Guys, I went with whatever was working for me at the time. I don't discriminate. I don't hate AMD. I don't hate Intel. I don't hate Apple. I don't hate uh, Google. I use what works for me. I couldn't give two shits what you guys use because I'm, I only have to be concerned with what I use. If you guys use what you like, more power to you. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, peop the fact that people are now saying that they're gonna unsub or m talking about maturity levels and such, the bottom line is use what works for you. It doesn't matter, AMD, Intel, you could go ARM for all I care. If it works for you, so what? But the bottom line was the jump from Ivy to Haswell wasn't worth it. So I jumped on a killer deal to go with third generation Intel, which was showing me almost 30 to 35% improvement over my AMD once this thing was overclocked. Now, a lot of people like to say the 8350 matches the 3770. 
every benchmark out there, even uh, tech syndicates, and a lot of people are still using that video as the definitive end-all AMD versus Intel video. Unfortunately, every benchmark from every reputable source, Tom's Hardware, Hard OCP, Overclock.net, it doesn't matter where you go. All of the testers and all of the editors show overclocked AMD matches stock Intel. But the moment you overclock Intel, which is just as easy, if not easier than AMD, because there's no more, uh, you don't have to deal with any of the, the frequency range of like Northbridge, it just pushes just beyond. So I'm really happy with this. I'm very sad to be, my AMD setup sitting right there on the table. I am sad to be getting rid of that, trust me. And here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, if AMD's new steamroller steamrolls over Intel, I can go back to AMD if I want to. Fortunately, this little gig of YouTube is what's allowing me to make these changes to get first-hand experience to bring you guys the videos that you deserve without talking out the side of my mouth or being biased. I think that alone just really ought to make you guys think whether or not I'm a fanboy or I'm an enthusiast. I'm an enthusiast of all things PC. I don't care what platform it is. You guys should be too.